OmniLight Intensity Color Attenuation Rollout. Here in my scene, I have three lights. I have two lights turned off and one turned on. So I'm going to pick on the light that I've turned on and go to my Modify tab. And I'm going to go down and pass my general parameters down to my Intensity Color Attenuation. You might have to hit the plus sign to, to expand it. First thing here is our multiplier. This is the multiplication uh, or intensity of light. So if you want a brighter light, we're going to change this. I'm going to set it to 3, and you can see how I brighten up the scene with that light. So it's it's kind of like a dimmer switch, if you will. All right? Or you can turn the volume up less than 1. So if I go down to 0.25, I mean, uh, rather, if I go to 0.25, <clears throat> It's very dim, okay? So, it's the by default is 1, but you can change it to any intensity of light. However, if you get it too high, <clears throat> let's say I'll go with 15, I get what's called a blowout. Um, the whites are blown out. It, it's too strong of light, and <clears throat> it produces really poor results. Uh, think of it as a photo where you got too bright of a flash. Uh, it gets blown out. So, you might want to just go down to something low, so we're doubling the amount of light down at 2. We can also change the color of light. So maybe I have a red incandescent light bulb, uh, or a yellow, like a bug light. So if I have a yellow, and I want to cast that yellow, I can just pick that yellow, and now I'm shining a yellowish light. And that doesn't show up too bright, but let's say I go to a red hue, and notice how the red hue is. No, it's red, right? It's casting a red. So um, we can go <clears throat> into any color that we like. And uh, and I'm just going to undo that here. Let me go back to, there we go, back to white. So now, so we can set the, the intensity in the color here. Now the decay is known as attenuation. Attenuation is how far the light falls off as it gets further and further away from the light source. By default, it's none. And I can turn this on to inverse. And inverse means that, you know, if I get to be two feet away, it's half the light strength. If I get to be four feet away, it's a fourth of the light strength. If I get an eighth of it away, it's an eighth of the light strength. And that's the way light really works. On well, none, it's the same intensity of light next to the light bulb as it is a half mile away. And that isn't the case in real life. So we do uh, want to set that. And we can set where it starts at. And I can say, well, I want the light to start uh, decaying after 20 uh, units. And you can see on the size of my gizmo, it's smaller. So this ring because an omni light shines light in all directions, it's a, uh, these spheres around the light are showing where the decay starts to happen. It doesn't say, hey, the light is strong, and then after 20 units, it starts to decay away. And, uh, and I can show that if I like. So I can pick <clears throat> how far away that is. I also have an inverse square. An inverse square is more closer to real life. An inverse square essentially is that we're uh, squaring the number. So after uh, two feet away, it, we have the fourth of the light because two times two is four. And after three feet away, we have a ninth of the light because three times three is nine. And after four feet away, it's four times four, and it's the sixteenth of the light. So this is actually more how cor correct that the light is. I can set where that light starts at. I'll set it back out to 30 a little bit. So these are very important numbers to get the amount of lighting. One of the most common mistakes students make in the beginning is their scene is too dark. That's generally they don't have enough lights in it and they haven't changed their multiplier. All right. And uh, and then if we want to have the, the light fall off, uh, to make it more realistic, we need to pick a type, either inverse or inverse square. These two areas down here in the intensity color attenuation is the near attenuation. The near attenuation 
is the the distance which the light begins the the light begins to fade in, and so I can say uh, I want to use this and I want it to start right away and end at 40 units, and I can change this and say I want and at 60 units, and you can see the size of this. Uh, ring here is, is changed and I can show that right so I can use that and then I can also set the far attenuation the far attenuation is the distance to which the light begins to fade out and so I can use that and say oh at a hundred you know right here is my hundred uh, it's fading out so I want to start to fade out right in front of the other teapot here so I might up that number you see how this ring now moved out. It's not quite enough. I'll go to 130, and now it's fading out right in front of it. But you see way out here is 250. I might want to go to say 200. And at 200, it, it ends, the fade out, the light ends at 200. And I could show that. So, you know, this is the light uh, begins to fade in. In here, far attenuation, the light begins to fade out. Okay, and the type of decay it is is based on either none, the light is full strength all the way across, inverse, it starts a, a linear effect, and inverse square, we actually have a quadratic uh, type of behavior. So these are mathematical behaviors of the light, and so these are the intensity. With how bright the light is, you can think of that as the wattage of your light bulb in some regards. Uh, and then the color, what kind of color the light is shining off. And then the attenuation, how far the, the light degrades as it gets further away from the light source.